Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thanks for being part of it. If you get a chance, check out the website. Lots to see and do there, and I want to thank again for the donations that has come in to help keep funding the project so we can continue filming a little quicker instead of there being pauses in between. Today, we're going to do a pedal assembly rebuilt. Uh, I did order the Big Boy Pedal Extender, and we'll go over that in a second. And we're going to take it completely apart, clean it up, paint it real nice, put it back together, and have the brake and the clutch further apart. So, I have big feet. I'm sure a lot of you do. Well, I wasn't taking a cheap shot. But it's hard for some of us to get our feet inside of there. I did forget to do something. I wanted to order a roller pedal, and I forgot because I've been ordering so many parts. Uh, a roller pedal does help between the brake and the pedal. When I had one before, I noticed the huge difference where it was easier to get my foot back and forth. <clears throat> Maybe it was a placebo effect, I don't know. So let's take a look and see what we got going on here. We have our pedal assembly here, and all of these are the same. You know, when you're getting into your latter 60s and your 70s and all that. Uh, what I did do is I bought a new snap ring for inside here. You'll see that in a little bit. I bought Oops, a new spring, one here. I'm going to keep this. There's nothing wrong with it because this one, oh, it came from Wolfsburg West, so it's probably a good spring. But I did do, buy a new return spring. And I bought a new roll pin. That's what I call them anyhow. It's called a clutch shaft pedal pin, uh, just in case that one gets screwed up. Let me show you some part numbers here. Okay. And... Here's, I call it a C-clip, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And there's from Westberg West also, the return spring. Okay, it's just trying to help you out. So, what we're going to start off doing first is we'll take the gas pedal off here to get it out of the way and then a the roller part. And then we got to get this pin out. That's usually the ugliest part of it. If you look here, if you take a look at this hook here, okay, it's not ready to break, but see how it's starting to egg shape? Eventually, the top of this is going to break off. And you'll be going down the road, and it'll feel like you have no clutch pedal. Because when you go to push this down, are you in the camera? Okay. When you go to push this down, this breaks off, and your clutch cable doesn't do anything. So, the big boy will be here tomorrow, but you're going to see this film all into one, and I'll explain why I'm splitting it, is it has a bolt on it, just like you see here. So what we're doing is we're eliminating this hook, and we're upgrading, so to speak. Doing that will make it go together easier because when you're putting this into the tunnel, the clutch cable is hooked on. You're sliding this in the tunnel. When you start moving around, the clutch cable comes off. And it causes a lot of aggravation during installation. So with us doing the pedal extension and the big boy on it, technically speaking, and the bolt-on cable, it's the factory cable. You're just changing this. It's night and day. And what it'll do, <coughs> it's hard to see in photos that I put up, this will move over further, just like you see here. We'll have more space because our big feet get up here and you know the deal. So we're going to move this over. I'm going to put this back together today, but we're going to put a roller pedal on. I got to order one. So let's get on it. Okay, what we're going to do first here is we're going to take the arm off that goes into the master cylinder. We're going to get that out of the way. Now, do not loosen this nut and start turning this, okay? Because you're going to change the adjustment on the pressure of it on the master cylinder. So we'll go over how to adjust this when I install the pedals and have the master in, in a later video. I'll dedicate a special video to this because people have had problems adjusting these right. So don't loosen that up, okay? What we're going to do, you have a clip right here. 
I'm just gonna... I have no idea. That shot off in her like a spring. Okay, we got to unhook our spring. This is tough to film. Okay, and then this just slides off. Okay, it's not a big deal to get off of there. Let me get that spring. <laughs> there it is. It took off on me. It's kind of weird. It's not under tension. Okay, so let's turn this around. You're going to need a hammer, of course. And we are going to take the lever off for the gas pedal. This pin right there needs pushed out. Okay, so just take a punch. Not like that. You're going to put it on there. Here, let me turn this so you can see. You see now? Just put a couple. Oh, this is going to be a bugger. Whoop. And there it is. Okay. And I know you're thinking, there's no clip to hold it on, so it don't fall out. It can't, because once this is in the car and bolted to the tunnel, this is inside the whole way, and it can't come out because it's against the tunnel. So hopefully that made sense. And then just take this off. We'll be putting our roller pedal on when it comes in. And next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the gas pedal off. Now, I've already pre-PB blasted it, but I'm going to do it again real quick. There's a lot of crap in here. Let's get some of that out. This will look like new when we're done. I'm going to PB blast again. We're going to have to take that pin out. So I'm going to move it over to a vise. So hold on one second. Now what I did do is I removed the rubber off the pedal because the flap was in the way. Actually, this one just needs cleaned up. It's got all kind of tread on it still, but they just pry off of there. Not a big deal. <clears throat> Let me take a tiny brush here and clean this up a little bit so that the lubricant can get inside of there. I'm sure this is not held in there. Very good, I did the best I could. Okay, and a little more PB. And we're gonna pound on it a little bit. Am I in your way? Let me check. Nope, you got a pretty good angle. This pin needs to come down and out. So, let's see. Hey, it's not moving. We knew that was going to happen. Ugh. And this came out of the vise. Let me re-grab it. the roll pin is going to be fun to get at. Okay. Let me try to tap it with a pin. Punch. There we go. And let's put this one on there now. Try not to get in your way comes and put this one on there now and it fell on the floor let me grab it okay there's your pin your shorter end see how one's a little shorter up here that goes in through the bottom so to speak you know what I meant okay so let me flip this around Now our pin <clears throat> came out, it's out, it pulls right out of that hole. Okay, don't lose your parts, but I guess you know that, right? Now take your pedal, slide it off. Nothing special about it. I don't know, maybe I should keep the stock pedal. Either way, there's a spring here. There's nothing wrong with the spring and I'll show you how that goes on during assembly. 
Okay, so that's all apart. Now what we're getting down to now is removing this pin. Now we gotta pop that pin at, and then slide this off. So this is the stubborn one here. So we're gonna put that back in a vise and we're gonna pound that out. Let me get it in there. So we have it in the vise. And what I like to do is I like to wire brush this real good and I'll show you why up close. You have dirt and rust around this. So take a little wire brush, clean it up real good because it gives the PB blast or crawl, whatever you use, a chance to get down inside. I hope this is not stubborn. The last one I did in my first series on a Super Beetle, I had to literally heat it with map gas to get it out. So let's give it a try. I got it in there pretty tight and see what happens. Let me get a punch here right on top of this. Let's see if we can get it started. Yeah, this is going to be fun. A second here, let me try this. Problem is, and that's what's happening, is that mushrooms it sometimes. So, and it did. Go figure. Pain in the butt. I hate this part. All right, let me see something because I don't believe it moved at all. I flipped it around. I don't know if that's going to help, but I'm going to try to start pounding the other way. Nope. Ain't tight enough in here. Okay, let me try again. And now you see why I bought a new roll pin. Just to have, which was smart to do. Come on, baby, just go. Ow. Come on, baby, just go. Ow. That hurt. Hit my hand. Come on. Uh, trying to give it a solid hit, and it was worth hitting my hand because it broke it loose. Hey! I didn't have to put map gas on it. Usually I do. Here, come on over. Here's the pin. See how I mushroomed the end of it? Okay, and then of course it goes through. Now I'm going to answer a question before somebody puts it in the comments. Does the roll pin have to come out in either in one direction? No. It can come out this way or the other way. It don't matter. It is just a roll pin. So it can come out either way. I just thought somebody might ask it, but now you don't have to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this apart now. What I'm going to do while it's still in the vise This has to come off of here. Let me bring you over here. This pedal pulls off of here from this assembly. So I'm going to leave this in the vise. I'm going to pound that way on it, and this will stay in the vise. You'll see. Now, I've already sprayed PB Blast in there, but I'm going to spray it in that hole that the roll pin came out of in hopes for some more lubrication. So we're going to, hey, the whole thing came off. Oh, okay, let's try again. Nope, still wants to fight with me. Okay, it's slowly coming apart. Come up close. See how it's starting to separate? When it does that, 
spray some PB Blast inside of there so it runs down inside the shaft, okay? And we're going to hit it a little more, although I don't want to hold in the vise real well. Out a little bit more. I guess you're seeing that. A little more PB blast that goes down in that shaft and inside there. This should be it now. There we go. Okay. See what the deal is? There's where the pin went through. Through there and through there. But when we put this back together, it's going to be all cleaned up. Now we got to get that clip. Now let's go over a couple things. I know. Now your pin goes through here and then through here and that's what holds it in. We did buy the new roll pin, okay? Now, once we clean this all up, it'll all slide back together easily. Don't bend this tab, okay? Whatever you do, see it? Right there, that's on the clutch pedal. That rests against that pedal stop on the floor. And we'll be getting a new one with our big boy extension. So don't bend that tab. I did a video on fixing that actually. It's way back. Okay, this just, let me see, there you go. This just slides out, okay. Now, don't panic. If you don't wanna do a big boy extension, that's fine but you can just buy the shaft that bolts the cable on, or you can buy another brand new factory one with a hook if you want to stay 100% stock. So you can just buy this. Your whole pedal assembly is not ruined if you have an issue you know, with the hook on it. So if you have to buy a new one, buy it. Obviously, I'm not going to use this because I have the uh, other one coming in. So let's put this aside. I guess for emergency, it really don't look that bad. So, what we have next is we have the snap ring. Remember I said I bought a new snap ring. That one looks small. Oh no, it don't. that's it. Whew, that was close. Now there's two holes here as you can see, and you can use, uh, screwdrivers to get pry them apart take it off do yourself a favor you're going to use these on other things just go buy a new set of snap rings i bought them at lowe's so okay enough about that let's pull this off see if you would have had screwdrivers in there you'd have been fighting with it seriously okay so now we got to pull this apart that comes apart like that. That's it for that part. Okay, so don't forget, like I did one time years ago when I was young, which I'm not now, put your spring on before you put this together. Because if not, you're gonna have to take it all apart and then you'll say bad things like I did. So we have this all apart. What I'm going to do now I'm going to remove the rubber pads. I'm going to buy new ones because, as you could see, the wear on it. Might buy some fancy ones. We'll see. But I'm going to wire wheel and clean these all up because you want all the gunk out of this. You want everything to move smooth on your accelerator pedal so you can pull wheelies, you know. But you want all this cleaned up. So clean it all up real nice. You want the shaft really smooth. You want to clean the inside of the shaft on the brake pedal up, and of course, this shaft's very important too. So I'm going to wire wheel, I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to paint these real nice and pretty, and then we're going to put it back together. So give me one minute, I'll be right back. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you have got to buy one of these. I mean, honestly, they're really nice. I thought that bulb was burned up. Oh well. These are nice. You have the wire wheel. I have a buffer pad on here right now. I was polishing stuff up for that radio. And I usually have a grinding wheel on this side. 
I bought this about 15 years ago. I don't know where from. I think it might have been Harbor Freight, but maybe not. It might not have been, but it was cheap. I bought a cheap one. I didn't buy an expensive one. I figured if I burned it up in a couple years for 40 bucks, I'd buy another one. Sorry about the lecture. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll fast forward this part of the film, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all up. We gotta take our rubber pads off. These are cheap, so I think like 15 bucks for a set of three and just buy new ones, you know. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, show you what it looks like, and then we'll hang it up and we'll spray paint them. And then we're gonna modify these pedals for big feet. Now, I'm going to show you something. I don't have a sandblaster, and I wire wheeled, and it's actually very clean, okay? There's a little PB blaster still. I got to clean it off with thinner before I paint it, but where I'm going with this, I was going to buy a sandblaster from Harbor Freight and sit there and sandblast all my parts, but the pedals are going to be down on the floor, and you're really, really not going to see them all that well. So, I'm wire wheeling it up, getting all the loose stuff off, cleaning it up with thinner, and then spraying it. If you want, you can go berserk and make them like, you know, chrome or whatever, but I'm not sandblasting. I'm cleaning them up real good, getting all the loose stuff off and spraying them. They'll actually look nice when they're done because the paint will fill in the voids. So I'm going to pause the camera a minute, clean this stuff up. I'll be right back. Hmm. I'm sure you're used to seeing me do this. It's uh, 70 degrees in the garage, somewhere around there. But outside it's like 35 so the metal was sitting in here all night it's cold use a hair dryer or a heat gun i happen to have a heat gun on hand today so let's warm this metal up i mean you don't want it burning hot but you want to you want to heat it up you want to chill off of this don't burn your hands if you do have a heat gun, but if you have one and own one, you already know how hot they can get, so. Okay, I'm gonna continue to heat the metal up, get it nice and warm, and then I'll be right back in one second. What you can also do is take your paint, warm water, not hot, warm water. Submerge your paint about up to there to warm the can up for about 10 minutes. Shake it up real good. That way it atomizes the paint with the can warmed up. So you might want to do that. Put your dust mask on, although I'm painting, so you might want to use a regular respirator, but I'm too lazy to get out of the house and get it. So I'm just putting this on, so don't go by me. Wear a respirator. Okay, let's get these painted. I'm not worried about these being perfect. They're, they're petals, is what it is. I'll do two coats. As you notice, I'm just kind of laying it on. Usually I'll do a light coat and this coat and that coat, but it's, it's a petal assembly. Okay, let that tack up. And I'll put a second coat on, and then I'll let it uh, let it dry overnight. But you'll be here in two seconds because I'll edit the film so you don't have to see it in two different parts. I am going to take my heat gun and speed it up. I don't understand that. Heat guns must draw a lot of power. My compressor kicks on or uh, my tor torpedo heater, lights don't do this, but the heat gun, they do it. So I, heat guns must draw a lot, a lot of power. If I heat this up, it'll dry quicker and it'll reheat that metal back up, so. 
Like I said, I'm not perfecting the pedals when it comes to the paint. Yeah, when you open a door and get down on your knees, you'll see it, but other than that, it ain't a big deal. Like I said, they're not going to be perfect. I'm not worried about that. I could have sat there and sandblasted them and did the whole thing, but they're going to look good enough because they're honestly, they're going to be on the floor behind your feet. So did they come out good? Yeah, somewhat, you know, not a big deal, but that's good enough. My main function is the pedal extender and the rebuild of them so they run smooth. In a couple seconds here, we're going to start putting it back together because I'm going to edit the film. These got to dry for 24 hours, but that's okay. That's what I need to happen for the big boy extender to be in the mailbox tomorrow. We're going to put it together, so hang tight, get yourself something to drink. I'll be right back. We're back. It's been 24 hours. Pedal assemblies are dry. Uh, I did use a heat gun, remember, warmed up the metal. I do that on a lot of stuff. I can't do that on a whole car, I don't think. It'd be nice, but I can't. Okay, we're gonna go over and open the box and take a look at the big boy extender and see what we have here. And I'm gonna show you a few tricks inside the car and put it together. First, look at all the wood. I busted up 15 pallets while I took them apart easily. We're going to be doing that wall back there for starters. <clears throat> so I got to pull my toolbox out and the bench because I know some of you said you wanted to watch that So I'll do a quick film on that in about a week or so and we're gonna do a really unique wall in here And it'll come out good. I hope before we start on the pedal assembly. I'm doing this in advance Come inside. I already did this see how I wire brushed it the Floor's really dirty wire brush that bolt head and spray some PB blast around it Come underneath the car, wire wheel or clean up that threads of that bolt and PB blast it. The reason I'm saying that is we're going to be removing that stop bracket, okay? And we'll say bye in a minute when we get the pedal assembly together and it'll make sense. So our box is here. We're going to open it up and see what all comes in the contents. Uh, here's who I ordered it from. We got it from Caddyshack. And they actually ship pretty quick. <clears throat> so let's open this up. Come on. Be careless. Razor knife, like me. Okay. Very well packaged. <clears throat> and let me see what they sent me here. Make sure there's no goodies. Sometimes places throw stickers in. No stickers. Oh man. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Score! I love stickers. Check that out. Woo! I love it. Now that's what I call class act. I didn't even ask them for a uh, sticker, they just automatically sent it to a lot of the places. I have to cry, complain send photos, and they'll send me a sticker. They sent one straight out of the deal. So, well, this was smart of them to do. I'm right in the middle of ordering. Engine parts. Oh, high performance. Okay. I'll check their website out and see what they have available in their pricing because I got to order stuff for rebuilding the engine. Sorry, I got lost in their ad. And... We're going to see what their prices are like. If you want, well, I better not do that. Never mind. Anyhow, <laughs> we'll go ahead. Let me bring you up close here. So we have the big boy clutch pedal extender. Let's open it up. From classic bug parts. I guess that's the originator of it, so to speak. Let's get it out of here. You in the camera view? Okay, I was just making sure. The new roll pin. 
Ugh, I just bought one. I didn't know it came with one. Okay, let's get this apart. Wow, they really packaged stuff. They didn't play around. Okay, and a little bit of grease. Thank you. A little bit of grunting. You always got to grunt. I think this is stuck on the tape. And some directions. Okay. Now. Very cool. Now one thing I'm going to say here. We don't really read directions, do we? But we'll take a look. Okay, mark location, floor pan, scrap tool, blah, 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 lock, course, privacy, blah, blah. Get that? So what we have here, wow, is this nice, is the extender to move the clutch pedal over, okay? And then we have this, where the clutch cable will go on to instead of a hook. Smoother operation, no catching, and no breaking the hook. Okay. They sent a pin. This probably is, okay, it's a synthetic grease. I was going to say lithium grease. And then this is for the floor. I'll explain why, what's going to happen there, and I'll show you. That's why I said to lubricate that bolt in your floor pan. Okay? So let's get started. First things first, always have a nice clean workspace, okay? And everything is sorted where you need to get to it. And if you think about it, you want a nice clean towel for everything. Go into your bathroom and take a nice clean bath towel without your wife catching it. <laughs> Let me grab a towel here and... And that's why I had to get new bath towels. Because you took, keep taking them and bring them up the garage, and you said, oh, I don't know where they went. I think I need to edit this part out. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't funny. Okay, here we go. Well, now we are inside the car. Now, remember I said to PB blast this, wire brush around lightly, and PB blast underneath. You want that thread clean. Okay. Mine... Oh, well, okay. Didn't expect that. Mine came from a salvage yard, so I thought it was going to be all rusted in there. So, what do you know? Something has to go right. <laughs> all right. Now, oh, there's a washer. We're going to take that off. Okay. We're going to wire brush. You can get these from the dollar store in a three pack, by the way. So, wire brush that area up, clean it up a little bit. Now, I'm gonna just, I'm not cleaning everything up because I gotta pull mine back up. I'm just doing this to show you guys and gals. What we have here is an extension block. Now, when this is on here, that stop stops your brake and your clutch pedal. See this one? Because your clutch pedal's extending out further, you needed this. These do wear down over time. You'll see an indention in some of them where they do start to wear down and you can buy a new one. So let's get the new one on there. Now what I do recommend you do is put some anti-seize on that bolt. Don't forget your lock washer, okay? Now this, as you can see, there's a ridge here on each side. So it's like a little saddle, so it can't move back and forth, okay? Now, start your bolt in. If you can find the hole, where in the heck is it at? Hello. It's a longer bolt because the thickness of this. So, and I just found it now. I think what I'm going to do and I won't do it right now because I'm pulling it back out. I would put a little bit of a flat washer on here, okay? Let me zip this down a minute and I'll show you a few more things. And then we'll be closing out for a day because there's always stuff you need to know. 
Now I'm going to leave it slightly loose to show you this is adjustable, okay? So I'm just going to leave it at that point right now. Okay, now this is the hole where your brake line comes through. So it comes through, goes down, and over to the clip. Now, the main thing is, and I'm going to show you something with the pedal assembly and it'll make sense. Let so what we have here then, we get everything spread out and ready. Okay, and make sure that everything is cleaned up and ready to go. We got our nice new shiny part here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start putting it together. Got you at the best angle I could possibly get you. So apologies if you're having a hard time seeing anything. One thing to know, these bushings sometimes in these get worn out a little bit. Okay, but they are brass bushings in here. You can get them, uh, you know, rebushed if you want to with new sleeves. A lot of people will take some aluminum tape and put them around here slightly so that uh, it holds a little bit tighter. Mine, however, are perfectly fine. There's no play up and down, if that makes sense. I'm just moving the whole thing with my hand, so should be okay. Uh, I prefer to keep the old German stuff, you know, when possible. So what we're going to do first is, I guess you're aware now, as I say about these, this is much different, and I'll show you what I mean here. When you have your stock one and you're trying to put that pedal in, okay, that has to stay on there and it makes it very difficult because when you're putting it in, it keeps falling off and then you got to keep taking the pedal assembly out. Also, when your clutch pedal is being used and pushed in and out like that constantly, this starts to wear this hook out and that's why it breaks. This here, let me show you. And there's a spacer on here, like a sleeve that spins. Once this is on there and that bolts on to hold it in place, this is such a smooth operation. Your clutch pedal will probably feel smoother, okay? And once it's bolted on, of course, well, the clutch cable ain't gonna pop off while you're putting it in. So it just makes it all the much nicer. Plus, you know, you're getting an extension too. So let's go ahead and start putting this together. Now, what I'm gonna do here is put a little grease on here, smooth it around, okay, slide it in, make sure everything moves nice and smooth. You wanna clean this out inside really good, okay? So now what we're going to do is get our spring we're gonna put our spring on, remember I said that, okay? Because if you forget that spring, then you're gonna to have to pull it all apart again. A Little bit of grease on there. Take your spring, make sure you put it on properly, okay? It's going to go on like this, and then that's gonna get turned around on the floor, okay? So set your spring on so you don't forget. You're gonna slide this on just like that, and make sure the spring is in this position, just like that, okay? The curved end towards the firewall, okay? So now what we're going to do, and here's something I can show you. If you can see, let me get a pointer, there's a little bit of space right here, and then the snap ring. If you want that to fit a little tighter, just put a flat washer here. You'd have to have a pretty big rounded out one or cut out a piece of plastic and put it there. But I don't mind having just a tiny bit of play in and out there. It's not going to bother anything. Okay? So now we're going to tape our snap ring pliers, our nice new snap ring. We're going to go ahead, set it in place. Let me, this is an awkward position, give me a second, and then spread it and drop it in. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm working with snap rings is give them a little push 
to see if they spin freely like that. And then you can always take a hammer and tap it lightly all the way around to make sure it's seated in the groove. Okay, in this case, it is nice and smooth. Okay, now we're moving along. Now remember, this is aftermarket, this is not like stock. So we have a spacer. That is how much this pedal is being pushed out because it needs a spacer on there, okay? We've already got grease on there. So we got our spacer on. We're gonna go ahead and put our pedal on. Now, <clears throat> come on, get on there. Give it a little tap. Oops, I just spun that. You got it, whoop, there we go. Make sure that hole is lined up in there or you'll never get that pin in there. You'll be beating on it and wonder what's going on. Take your new roll pin, put it in there. Let me check. Yep, we're still lined up. It's just a tight fit. Okay. You have a little bit coming through here, okay? And a little bit here. I'm gonna pound it just a hair more. There we go. You just want a little bit on each side showing and it's nice and tight so we have got our spring on whoops here we go now what you're going to do and i'm not completely installing mine yet but i'll show you something what you're going to do here is you're going to take your master cylinder push rod clean it up real nice look how good that looks okay don't loosen that. Don't start turning that, okay? You can adjust this later if need be, but you really, really shouldn't mess with it. Make sure your spring is out of the way. Okay. You're going to slide that on. You're going to take your horseshoe clip and put it like this with that lip faced in that way and just Press it on. It feels loose. Let me see something. All these little parts you should buy new. There, tighten it up. You should buy new. And basically you're just, there we go. Putting it on like that. And that's in place. Then your spring goes over top like this okay and that's how that's going to go now i'm pulling this off right now because i'm only going to install for your viewing because i got to take this back out i got work to do in the car yet but i wanted to show this while i was doing it and we come to the gas pedal now i'm going to go ahead and install it and of course once I take the assembly back out, I pulled off. I'm gonna do a roller pedal, but it didn't come in yet. So I'll at least install this because the most you're gonna be doing a normal pedal. Now your pin that holds your pedal assembly on goes in through here, okay? Just like that. Now it'll go through here and it holds it in, as you know. Now, just before anybody asks, how does this pin stay in? Well, this is up against the tunnel. This gets bolted in like that against the tunnel so the pin can't come out. It's against the tunnel, in case anybody was gonna ask that. You should buy a new pin that's going to go through here because I can push mine in by hand, which means it would come right back out. But I'm not redoing this stock gas pedal, so, for those of you that are, which I recommend the roller pedal, but that's just me. You know what I mean? You put on what you want. But the spring is going to go in like this. Okay. The shorter end, you're going to start first. And you're going to put it through. Now, here comes the, not a tricky part, but 
you're going to take this and lift your pedal up and you're going to push this through so it goes through the spring and all the way through come on there we go and that's how it would look okay so your spring my spring in this pin needs replaced but like I said I'm not putting this on so I'm not buying new parts that's kind of silly so we have that in place you're going to put your lever in and you're going to push your pin in just like that okay your pin goes straight through this will go up against there and there's your action going on my spring needs replaced plus there's not a throttle cable on it either so that's how that works so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to remove this because it's going to fall off anyhow because this pin's old okay and it'll give me better camera angle to show you the bolts going in and what i do so let's go ahead and get inside the car and get this bolted in and i'll show you how the spring hooks up and how to adjust the assembly let's do it we have here now your pedal stops in place okay now i left it i snugged it up a little bit but this is a slide back and forth so that you can adjust this now i already explained we need to trim this if possible for the brake line. Now don't go crazy. You don't want to completely foul this thing off. You know what I mean? But if you have to foul it just slightly to clear the brake line, then do it so that you don't have an issue. You don't want to rub your brake line with that. Well, you know what'll happen then. Take your bolts, wire wheel the threads real clean, get them cleaned up, test them. See if they go in real smooth, okay? What I did is I wire wheeled the threads on my bolts and I went ahead and took a little bit of PB Blast, sprayed it on these threads, ran them in and out a couple times so they're smooth, okay? So what we're going to do, and I'm going to try to not get in front of the camera, okay? You're going to put, come on, you're going to put your spring on. You see how that goes, right? Okay, so yeah. All right. And this obviously, your clutch cable is going to come out. You're going to hook it onto this and tighten the bolt. Okay, the nut, I'm sorry. And obviously, you're going to be in this position when you're doing it. And then you're going to feed it back inside. Holding your clutch pedal will make it easy. Okay, so you have your spring there. Make sure. The other end of your spring back here is mounted on the floor, or it's touching the floor technically, okay? Like I said, I left the gas pedal off so I could show you what's going on. You're going to take this bolt and get it started. I sure hope my head's not in the way. Whoop. Sometimes these can be a bugger to get lined up and you're fighting with a spring, so it doesn't make it easy. All right. Now hold this in place so this spring doesn't pop. You can see it's pushing. Where's the other bolt? There it is. Don't know if I'm lined up completely yet. So we're all tightened up now, okay? And your push rod is not in the master cylinder right now because I don't have a master, all right? However, 
look how nice and smooth that is. Okay, I had to fix the spring. I had the bottom too far over. Now, like I said, I'm going to put a roller pedal on. I did leave the gas pedal off so you could see what's going on. Now, I'm going to show you something else real important here. Let me get the camera. Now, as you could see down here, see that lip? That's your adjuster, technically. See that lip? Now, you can see down here the lip that goes against the pedal stop, okay? You can see about where your pedals are. If this was like this, then you adjust your pedal stop, okay? Or if it's down here, you adjust it to where they need to be. Actually, I got lucky. Mine look pretty good where they're at, although I got to take it off again. And you adjust it just right here, just by sliding that pedal stop right there. And tightening the bolt. That's it. Let's go back further. Now that's what you call further apart. This is nice. I am very, very happy with the outcome of this. You could see the distance now between them. So when your feet are on there, they're not touching each other. So this is going to be a much more comfortable ride when it comes to your feet. And putting the roller pedal on still gives me more clearance than the gas pedal being there because I'm not coming off that gas pedal right up against the brake pedal. So honestly, I'm excited about the roller pedal because I did have one before <coughs> on my 72. But there you go. There's the further apart distance. And let me finish out today with some important notes and uh, we'll close out. Well, what do you think? I like it. To tell you the truth, I honestly believe it's worth it. Uh, I like the end where you don't have to deal with the hook anymore and fighting when you're getting a clutch cable in there. I fought a little to get the, my bolt started back in there and why that was happening, I paused the film and checked. I cleaned the threads on my bolts, but the threaded inserts inside the tunnel had some rust buildup. I got in there with a little baby bottle type wire brush, cleaned them up and then the bolts went right in. So that's why you were seeing me fight. Uh, okay. I want to thank everybody for being here. I really appreciate it. And please join the club when you get a chance on Facebook if you're on there, the group. And next week, I believe possibly we're going to do a really nice version while the car's a part of what to look for when you're purchasing a Beetle. Heather is going to step in and help me with that. I really appreciate her doing this. Uh, we're going to tag team and show you, while there's no fenders on and everything, so it's easier to film, every single thing to check before buying a Beetle. And I'll go over Super Beetle too at the same time. And this pedal extension today also goes with Carmen Ghia, Fastback, Squareback, same type of deal. I believe it fits all of them, but check just to make sure. So thanks for being here. Take a look at Caddyshack. Great service. Got my stuff quickly. I'll see you next time.